Hey guys, it's Bub here. Last week I uploaded a video about Ubuntu 11, which is a Windows 11 Linux based clone that aims to really replicate the UI of Windows 11 and make Windows users familiar with a Linux distribution. That video blew up more than I could have ever expected. And because of its massive success, many valid points were brought up in the comments that I felt like I needed to address in this video. So this video is not something I typically do, but it's a follow up to the very great points brought up by viewers in the comments of the Ubuntu 11 video. So this is kind of like a second look, knowing and addressing those comments that were left by the viewers. The first issue that was mentioned was the fact that I complained that the system was very laggy. Many people said you're lacking VMware tools because I didn't install VMware tools and it is a low spec VM, which is why things were a little glitchy. So in terms of specifications, I have now put 24 gigabytes of RAM in this virtual machine and six processor cores. I use the network boot for the ISO, but I already installed the operating system, so it's not booting from the network. Um, I also have installed VMware tools on this virtual machine. So granted, yes, we are now running still in a virtual machine. This is a beefed up virtual machine that has all kinds of power built into it that should really make this OS thrive with the VMware tools, the enhancements, as well as the updated specs. So the image that we're actually taking a look at today, between last video and this video, the Ubuntu developers have released a new image that fixed the bugs in the Dolphin directory. If you remember, the folders were in a different language and they didn't redirect to the right actual folders like they had desktop in English and desktop in Spanish and they didn't talk to each other. Um, and they fixed an error that removed Microsoft Teams from the system. So this is a new up-to-date image that was released, I believe, on December 6th. This is the one we're going to be taking a look at. So those two things out of the box, the fact that the Ubuntu developers have released a new image and I have beefed up the system. Let's first take a look at this notification that we got right here. Ubuntu operating system. You are using the free version of Power Toys. Power Toys are running in trial mode. Support our project by donating and earn a license to continue using Power Toys. It is $35 to register for Power Toys um, on this system, which gives you personalized support for Ubuntu, as well as all Power Toys package updates first. And we can see right here, Power Toys is not activated, and it will ask you to actually pay and put in a product key, buy a license, things of that sort. This is something that a lot of viewers complained about, the fact that, hey, this is like Windows 11 where you have to pay for these features, which is a little crazy. Another thing that people were asking is where to actually download this. Many people couldn't find it on the internet, which I'm not sure how, but I will show you exactly where to get it and exactly how to get it and try it out on your own machine. I also got a lot of heat in the last video for saying that Microsoft Edge isn't bloatware. Um, fun fact, I actually use Microsoft Edge on a daily basis and it is my favorite browser I've ever used. So the way to get this ISO is to go to ubuntu.org if it would let me type. And this is the website for Ubuntu. So from here we can see we can download or buy the key. There's our $35. Um, as well as go to Downloads Free Edition, and you can download Windows Ubuntu, so Ubuntu, or Linux FX Red Sand, which is less based on Windows 11 um, and more based on something, on just regular uh, Ubuntu, I think. Um, but this follows a different uh, development path than the Linux FX alternative does. So in the last video, I mentioned all the pre-installed apps that came with this OS. You know, Android, Chat GPT, uh, like just all this crap that came with the operating system. And I said, even Steam, and I said, this OS contains more bloatware than Windows 11 does. And that, of course, brought up a lot of debate. Um, the reason I said that is because I typically stay away from Windows Home licenses. All of my machines that I have are either Windows Pro or Windows Enterprise, and I've always clean installed. I never use OEM installs. So that typically eliminates all the bloatware like Candy Crush Saga and things of that sort. They don't come on Pro and Enterprise licenses. So that was my reference point. However, looking back at what actually does come with Windows 11 Home, there is a lot more bloatware in Windows. So I will say that compared to Windows, the Windows Home license, this actually comes with pretty useful stuff. Um, that is not really offered in Windows. You know, Windows does come with that level of bloatware. 
Another big question is why would someone create a Windows 11 clone if it can't run Windows? We can see here that it does have, if it can't run Windows apps. We can see here that there is a MS Windows support run EXE and MSI and we're actually going to take a look at this and we're going to see if we can actually install an EXE app. Uh, so what we're going to do is install additional compatibility modules automatically and it is going to install Wine and if you're unfamiliar with Wine, Wine is an attempt to emulate the Windows kernel to actually get um, Windows apps to run. Um, it is available on way more than Ubuntu. It's not a Ubuntu exclusive feature. And we're going to see, what I want to try to do is if I can install Google Chrome for Windows. That'll be my test. Maybe it's not a good test, but it's the test that I want to take a look at. While Wine is installing, many, many concerns are brought up about a possible lawsuit from Microsoft. I mean, think, they have the Windows logo built into the operating system. It comes with a whole bunch of apps like Online Edge, Online Microsoft, online Microsoft apps it comes with Microsoft Edge comes with it does come with teams so what is the issue like what is Microsoft gonna sue this company what's going on here um, so I'm not a lawyer so don't take my legal advice I don't know much about you know the viability of creating a Windows clone in Linux um, Windows FX which I actually learned this is Windows FX rebranded so they rebranded it to try and get the bad name off of Windows FX has existed for years and Microsoft really hasn't cared. I'm sure there's some level of law being broken, especially with the fact, I mean, look at the logos and the pre-installed apps that are in the operating system, um, and especially selling uh, software under the name Power Toys. That is most definitely breaking a law somewhere. And another point was, why would people actually use this operating system? Um, many people are fine with either Ubuntu or KDE Plasma, so why? go through the effort to actually you know look at something like this um, I personally would not use a themed Linux OS I would prefer a vanilla install of something like Ubuntu or something with KDE Plasma um, but each distribution of Linux has its own user base and I'm sure that there's someone out there that would find this interesting I mean many people brought up the usage of trying to scam scammers with it or someone who's older who wants to transition to Linux but is used to Windows 11 that is what the primary purpose of this was and what was brought up in the comments but i'm actually not a hundred percent you know sure who this is designed for let's take a look at the snappiness now that we have vmware tools installed now that we have a beefed up system i mean if we take it info center i just want to see what this actually recognizes so it recognized six cores of a core i7 10 700k um, as well as the 24 gigabytes of RAM. This is a virtual machine, so I'm sure that it would run better on physical hardware. I'm not denying that. So taking a look at the start menu here, um, I know if somewhere that we lagged behind in is system settings. Um, and just click on the settings. We can see that lag there, how long it takes to open. It is definitely better with a beefed up system, but it is not as good as it. I think it should be, in my opinion. Um, especially, I just dragged the window to the side and it just froze the system. I don't know if it's trying to do snapping or what it's trying to do. So I remember I tried to change the display resolution, so I clicked on display and it froze up. It loaded display config, I can now change it here. So it is acting a little better with VMware tools and it is acting better with the beefed up specs, but it's still not great. It's okay. Again, I am sure it would run beautifully on a real physical bare metal machine. All right. The system has been updated and now you can run MS Windows applications on the Power Toys platform. So the installer in settings said that we may be able to actually run the MSI or an MSI. It said in settings, if it would ever load, that we are supposed to be able to run MSIs. And the Minecraft Legacy Launcher is in fact an MSI. There we go, let's take a look here. It said run.exe and .msi applications. I'm not actually expecting to play Minecraft, but I am expecting to run the installer. And oh my god, it is running. This is actually insane. It is literally running 
Windows application. I don't know why I'm surprised. This isn't actually Ubuntu. This is Wine, but it's it's actually it's running a Windows application. All right, so it looks like Media Creation Tool isn't going to work, which is okay, um, because I, something tells me that Microsoft doesn't want you doing this anyway. But hey, we we installed the Minecraft launcher. That, in my opinion, is a win. I can't believe we got that to actually work. So, and it shows up in the start menu too. That is actually really sick. So with that being said, this is the second look at Ubuntu 11. Definitely I hope this clears up a lot of confusion and some of the discrepancies that were in the last video. And I am really hoping that this uh, will continue the development and continue looking into this operating system. Just for disclosure, I am not sponsored or affiliated with Ubuntu and the development team in any way, shape, or form. I am getting no compensation for doing this. This is the simple fact that I wanted to showcase this operating system. With that being said, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.